Situated where the Ottawa River meets the St. Lawrence Seaway, Montreal, the largest inland port in the world, and a major transportation hub for goods and for people. Over three and a half million people live in the greater Montreal area, making it the largest French-speaking city in the Western Hemisphere. Newcomers flock here from all corners of the world, drawn by a way of life that celebrates diversity. As they come, they bring their food, their dress, their customs, and their music. The result a dynamic cultural milieu that absorbs and blends countless musical traditions. To explore how this process of cultural blending works in practice, three world-class musicians have come together in this vibrant city for a unique collaboration. The are Liu Feng, who was raised in China and trained at the Shanghai Conservatory. She plays the pipa, or Chinese lute, and she is a master of Gu Zheng, a zither. Yegor Dieshkov, who was born in Moscow and was trained in the European classical tradition, plays cello. And Kongor Zul Gambatar, also known as Zola, sings in the Mongolian folk tradition of Urtin Du, or Long Song. They represent a younger generation of musicians fully open to the power of music to transcend boundaries. They will rehearse and then perform together in front of a concert audience compositions based on the long song form. This will be a voyage of discovery for all of them. The musicians meet for the first time. It's very difficult to make a knot, make a, I don't know, written uh -huh. in oh, Mongolian uh, long song. Well, it's, it's, it's actually very clear, I mean, because you see, you, uh, you use the pentatonic scale all the time, right? whether you would transpose, whether you, I didn't even know if you, you actually work with written music or if it's all traditional by ear. Okay, uh, so when do we start? Maybe Thursday? 
So we can do something in the beginning, something mm. between yes, verse, uh, mm. verse yes, uh, two and three. Mm. I could I could play the beginning. Yes, you can. Yeah. And you can do the middle. And I will follow you two times. Mm -hmm. Liu Fang is comfortable improvising. Yeah. Yegor, however, has to work from a score. His music will be written for him by composer Michael Oesterli. One thing I discovered about the long song is that it has a, to me, kind of a universal quality to it. It's moving, it's, it has an immediacy that is just fun to, to embrace. And it stands so well on its own meaning that you don't, it doesn't need accompaniment from another instrument, although as soon as you put other musicians with a long song, it just becomes marvelous and it does many things open up. Yegor's classical European training began as a student at the Tchaikovsky Conservatory in Moscow. He moved to Canada when he was 13 and studied at the University of Montreal. He subsequently went on to study at the Music Academy of Cologne, Germany. Today, Yegor Dieshkov is one of Canada's most respected classical musicians. I was born in Moscow, Russia, uh, in 1974, and um, I remember being quite sensitive to music. I, for example, my father was one of the first performers of the Shostakovich viola sonata. He's a violist and my mother the pianist, and they both played it together, and this is very, very sad and intense music, and uh, I remember I was about five or six years old. I remember my parents noticing that I was getting a sad eye, maybe, <laughs> when listening to that. So. There was this, uh, this connection to music already. I didn't decide to become a musician. I think my parents couldn't ignore the fact that I had some talent for music. My mother actually used a ruse to lure me into playing. Because at that age, I really wanted to become a, a zookeeper. And uh, my mother said that, um, well, you know, animals are very sensitive to music, and uh, particularly to the cello. And uh, I think it really worked. I thought, well, you know, this is an instrument that could, could make me uh, a better zookeeper, maybe. And <laughs> I just went ahead and uh, gave it a try. And uh, soon enough found out that this was indeed a very appropriate instrument and means of expression for me. Uh, I felt that I could connect with music and I could express things that I couldn't express otherwise. And I think uh, by the age of 10, I was pretty sure that this is what I had to do. My father spent countless hours just sitting in my practice sessions and, and, and trying to guide me and making sure that I covered all the, all the material. It, it takes a great level of commitment from parents in general, and certainly in an ultra-competitive school like uh, in which I was enrolled, the Central Music School, which was attached to the Moscow Conservatory. So there's a lot of 